Hello, guys and gals, and welcome to another episode of Unique Items. <clears throat> Today, we're going to be taking a frog in my throat. Today, we're going to be talking about Nosferatu's Coil, the Vampire Fanged Belt. Uh, Nosferatu's Coil is a relatively interesting belt because it is one of the few belts in the game that has faster attack speed on it. And, um, it, uh, it shares, I think the only other belt is, um, G -g gold wrap. G -g gold wrap. There you go. G -g I know it was on the tip of my tongue and I couldn't get it out for some reason. But uh, gold wrap is the other belt in the game that has uh, increased attack speed. Um, however, this belt seems to be a little bit better than gold wrap in terms of attack speed. If you're specifically going for an attack speed belt, this seems to be your boy. Um, so let's take a look at this belt together and we'll talk about what it could be useful for, who it could be useful for, why you would want to use it, and why you maybe wouldn't want to use it. So we also have, um, sorry, we also have, we have uh, 59 defense on this with a level requirement of 51. So not too bad on the level requirement. Um, it is a 50 strength requirement, which is also not too bad, especially considering it is an elite belt. Uh, this is not upgradable. Um, it has 10% increased attack speed, which, as I said, shares uh, with uh, the gold wrap belt. Uh, I don't think there's very many other belts in the game that have 10% increased attack speed on them. I can't think of any right off the top of my head, but uh, I'm pretty sure it's just these two. Uh, we also have 7% lifesteal on this, which does vary between 5 to 7%. So if you were going to utilize this as kind of like a best-in-slot kind of piece of equipment, uh, you would probably want to... Uh, to find a 7%. Uh, we also have slows target by 10%, which is a very, very nice effect to have. It slows down all targets by 10%. It does stack uh, cumulatively up to a cap of 80%. Um, for instance, if you have a Holy Freeze Mercenary, or you're using Holy Freeze, or you have uh, Decrepify on a target, or Clay Golem is hitting the target, or any other person in the group has slows target by, uh, they will all stack together to uh, cumulatively make everything much slower. So this could be very, very useful on a wide array of characters, uh, just simply because not only is it increasing your attack speed and giving you nice lifesteal, it's also decreasing the attack speed of all the monsters that you're fighting, as long as you're hitting them. Uh, we also have 15 bonus strength on this particular item, uh, which is pretty nice to have on any kind of end-level piece of equipment, because that means that you can plunk in more strength, or uh, sorry, more uh, stat points into your vitality as opposed to your strength which is certainly not bad. Uh, the belt also has a plus two to mana after each kill, which can actually come in super handy for a lot of characters. Uh, if you're killing monsters on a regular basis and you have man a mana a problem, um, you will notice that this kind of belt will make a huge difference in the uh, speed of your kills. So like, for instance, maybe if you're a Javazon, um, who is killing things relatively quickly, but you're burning mana relatively quickly, for every single you know cow you kill, for instance, um, you would get plus two mana back, which would be uh, a relatively nice boon. Uh, you also have negative three light radius, which uh, most people don't really care about. Uh, now, this particular item, I believe, actually went through a change back at 1.09. Um, and um, I believe the name was actually changed, if I remember correctly. Um, I'm, I, I can't remember the name right off the top of my head. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to look it up. But I'm pretty sure it was something like something stealth. Yes, Sigurd's Stealth. But the, uh, if I remember correctly, the stats were the same. They just changed the name. I'm not entirely uh, sure about this. I'd have to look it up. Um, let's see. I have something here. It says, note this item only spawns at 1.10 or later. If one possesses a Nosferatu's coil from patch 1.09, and below, once they upgrade it to version 1.10, it will change its name to Sigurd's Stealth. All other characteristics stay the same. The, this, the reason for this name change is unknown. Hmm. Interesting. Now, of course, this item also has the uh, whole vampire thing going on with it. Obviously, Nosferatu is supposed to be a vampire. Um, it's another term for, you know, like, uh, like, like Dracula and stuff like that. And we have Dracula's Grasp. We have Nosferatu's Coil. We have Vampire Fang Belt, which is what it's made out of. Um, 
there are a couple items in the game which have, uh, you know, vampire-ish kind of uh, tones to them. We even have Triangle Set, which I actually just did a video on, if you're interested in, uh, that is literally turns you into a vampire. So, uh, so very interesting. I think there was a little bit of a vampire fetish going on in the uh, Blizzard North offices. So, who could potentially utilize this belt, and and why? Well, a, uh, a boson, I think, could get relatively good use out of this. Uh, the slowest target, combined with the lifesteal and the attack speed, make very, very good choices. And the strength would allow her to not have to plink so many points into strength for armor and bows and such. Uh, we, this could also re work relatively well on a Javazon as well, for the same reasons. Uh, we also have uh, a, uh, basically any melee character could get relatively good use out of this belt if you are a... Uh, a, a zeal paladin, a vengeance paladin. If you were a, uh, a barbarian who was whirlwinding around, the slowest target by would be very, very nice. Um, just in general, I feel like this particular kind of belt would be very, very nice. Uh, now, the whirlwind barbarian wouldn't get the effect of the increased attack speed, unfortunately. So maybe more of a frenzy uh, barbarian. Um, and uh, in the upcoming patch, it looks like increased attack speed is also going to affect druids. So... It might have an effect there, uh, but what they said they were going to do was it was going to use the old calculation and the new calculation together. So uh, if if you can't get faster than the old calculation, then the old calculation is still going to be faster, and this will do nothing. Um, I wouldn't use this on a caster class. Uh, maybe if you were specifically a uh, caster class that is going for melee, like a bear sorceress or something, could be interesting. Now the the main issue with this belt is its stiff opposition. Um, we have to go and take a look at its opposition. I feel like that is important. So because this is an endgame belt, let's take a look at the other endgame belts for this particular tier. So if I was a, uh, a melee or a ranged character, I might be looking at something like Verdungo's, which has 15% damage reduction. Now, it doesn't have the lifesteal or the slowest target or the increased attack speed that the uh, Nosferatu's Coil does, and for Redongo's Hardy Cord is more of a defensive belt than anything. But that 15% damage reduced by is kind of hard to beat. Uh, we also have Thunder God's Vigor, which is another war belt, um, another belt that, uh, that has relatively nice stats. It has strength, it has vitality, it has lightning absorption and maximum lightning resistance. Um, and this belt actually comes in extremely handy in a lot of situations. And so this belt ends up being chosen over Nosferatu's Coil. Uh, we also have Arachnid's Mesh with his plus one to skills and also has a slowest target 10%. Um, and this one is a very, very good choice as well. And if you're a sorceress, we even have the Snow Clash Battle Belt, which is absolutely great for specifically... Um, a, uh, a blizzard sorceress or a glacial spike sorceress. And so what you uh, end up looking at here is there are so many other options which may be better than what this belt offers. So do you specifically need the 10% increased attack speed? Do you specifically need the lifesteal? Do you specifically need the slowest target buy? Um, and then this is kind of uh, where you have to go with this particular belt on choosing this. Do you need the damage reduced buy? Um, and melee characters specifically usually need a pretty decent amount of damage reduction. And um, unless you're getting your 50% damage reduction from somewhere else, you're probably going to need to use for Dungos. Um, and that's really what it comes down to is, is do you need the specific stats on this build over the others. Now, on a ranged character, like a Boson, I could see using this over a Verdungo's because you don't really get into melee combat very much and you don't really need to worry about it so much as uh, a melee character does. And the 10% increased attack speed along with the lifesteal and the slowest target can be very, very handy for a Boson, especially the uh, 15 to strength, which will uh, certainly make it a lot easier to, uh, to not have to to build strength to use your bows. Um, now, the uh, Thunder Gods does have 20 strength on it, uh, which is very interesting. I mean, it's it's kind of odd, because when you look at the other belts, this bow, uh, belt offers strength, and so does Thunder Gods. Um, this belt offers a 10% uh, slows target buy, and so does Arachnid's Mesh. Um, you know, this belt offers uh, lifesteal, 7% lifesteal, and so does String of Ears, which I don't have on me right this second, but String of Ears is also a lifesteal slash 
damage reduced my belt. Um, so, you know, it's it's just kind of like an odd mix of like several different belts. It has the lifesteal from String of Ears. It has the increased attack speed from the uh, from the gold wrap. It has the slowest target buy from the uh, Arachnid Smash. It has the plus to strength from uh, Thunder God's Vigor. And uh, and overall, it, it makes for a very interesting belt. But are you going to choose it for your particular class? That's the question. Now, if you wanted to find this particular belt, uh, we can go over to Silo's Pen and we can take a look and see where this particular belt might potentially drop from. Uh, so let's hop over there and uh, we're going to grab the uh, Nosferatu's Coil. All right, and we're going to pretend we have 150% magic find. It's going to be players one and we're going to look at bosses. So a very short list um, of, of monsters here. Um, as you can see, a lot of these are quest kills. We're going to ignore those, and uh, we're going to go straight to Diablo is our best chance here. Diablo in Hell difficulty with 1 in 1,593. Uh, we also have Bale, Mephisto. Uh, both of those have pretty decent chances in Hell as well. Um, and Duriel, which we never farm because he trolls us with Scrolls of Town Portal. <laughs> Looks like Andariel has a pretty crappy chance at 1 in a 22,207. Let's take a look at Super Uniques, and uh, let's see what kind of Super Uniques we can potentially farm. So it looks like Neelithak, Radamant, Battle Maid Serena, uh, and the Ruined Temple. Uh, we've got uh, Bonebreaker in the Crypt. He's relatively easy to get to. Um, do, 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 do. We're looking for easy monsters. Most of these are difficult to find, like Ancient Kavasolas. He's rather difficult to find. I don't really recommend ever farming him. Um, Eldritch the Rectifier, very easy to find. Shank the Overseer, very easy to find. Doc Farron, very easy to find. Uh, Frozenstein, Pendle Skin, Thresh Socket, Bone Ash. All these are relatively easy to find monsters. Um, you could very easily take the waypoint and go kill Bone Ash. Um, you could uh, take the waypoint to Act 5, and then you could go kill uh, Doc Farron. Uh, just teleport down, and he's in the middle of the siege zone. And then you teleport up, and you kill the Shank. Shank is uh, is obviously at the end of the siege zone. And then right there next to the waypoint is uh, Eldritch the Rectifier, uh, which is uh, another monster right there, super unique. And then down, further down the way of the zone that Eldritch is in, at the end of Eldritch's zone, is uh, Thresh Socket. And there you have a really nice little little uh, like four or five monster combo. Uh, you throw in Pindle Skin as well, who is obviously right there in Act Five. And you've got um, you got Bone Ash, Pindle Skin, Eldritch, Doc Farron, Shank the <laughs> Shank the Overseer, and uh, Thresh Socket. So if six monsters, six super uniques that you could kill in quick succession, um, searching for this particular belt. That's not bad. Uh, anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, and some of these videos are uh, going to be a little odd, especially considering some of the items have rather odd uses. And uh, as always, keep watching.